Welcome to We're Live. Hi, I'm Michael Carroll, Jimmy Carroll Gallery. Here we are at Art Miami 2022 with the fabulous Mocha Leger. And in front of her work, we have several pieces we're going to talk about very briefly in the context of what it is that Mocha does and about these pieces specifically. So, very, very quickly, there, there's a long line, as we talked about, of artists working with the idea of the plane and shaped canvases in particular. And you have, an, um, obviously, living in New Mexico, these are colors that are, are more or less familiar to us, but there's an added dimension of your growing up in North Africa, which is not a dissimilar kind of place. Is that fair? Yeah, yeah no, that's absolutely true. And uh, in fact, the curious thing is that Santa Fe, New Mexico, turns out to be exactly on the same latitude as Oran, Algeria, where I was born. And on the 35th northern parallel. Oh, we don't. And um, yeah, within a fraction of a degree. So it means that the light quality is very similar. And North Africa also has um, these colored rocks and this golden light. Uh, and just a lot of similarities, which is ultimately why I ended up in New Mexico. And that, that was the uh, the home place of Camus' story, The Plague, was it not? It was, Talking absolutely. About around. Yep. Yes, yes, and much literature, and uh, that yes, goes back in French history. Yeah. So, uh, this is a teeny bit of a tangent, but the colors, the way the plains work, the way the mountains work, those are similar kinds of animals to what we have in New Mexico. But was your work informed in a way by literature? I've never asked you this question. Well, my work, of course, was informed to some degree by literature, but I would say maybe more by philosophy and uh, in the French philosophy having to do with the um, absurdist uh, authors. Um, just to go back, in, in North Africa, one of the first things that I remember as a kid was this idea of mirages, and uh, which is, you know, fast forward very quickly, uh, something that influenced me in terms of what we see with with our eyes, but it's not necessarily real. What is true? What is truth? What is perception? Yeah. Um, and this is something that the um, you know was also debated in uh, with Dadaists in France and in the literature with uh, absurdist plays and so forth. So, right. Well, right. Le Perugue, absolument. Uh, uh, just uh, no exit and uh, just. Uh, UNESCO and so many others yeah. um, that yes, were, uh, and of course I was fascinated by surrealism as well. Um, Excellent. Well, so let's go to here because, it, I mean, if you think about um, the, the most basic elements of a surreal composition, it, in a way, here they are, right? It, we're beyond planes, but there's a, a kind of a structure that's, where. what do we what do we hang our knowledge on? Where's the book that we can hang our knowledge on? And that was the, the obviously the brilliance of the surrealist. Like, I may or may not give you a hook, yeah. right? But yeah. here it is. Yeah. Here's well, this yeah. thing. Absolutely, exactly. And I mean, a lot. The idea with many of these paintings is really to give you an experience. Uh, it, it's not a didactic uh, presentation. It's really something that what happens when you look at something. Where do you decide to hang yeah. uh, your, your knowledge, your, your vision? Uh, because you have the eyes and you have the brain, and the two are working together or not. And um, you know, it goes back to this idea of perception and what we're really seeing. What is your experience of what you're seeing? And in terms of um, how uh, it works with the, the reality of the show or the, the lack of. So, uh, so did you take this kind of understanding to the states when when you came here to study with Gene Davis? Was and how, was he working on some of those same ideas? Was it syncretic in that way, or was there a little bit of a collision in terms of how you ultimately pursued what you pursued here? Yeah. No, I would say that Gene was not interested in these kinds of things at all. It was much more a product of my European upbringing. Um, uh, Gene was interested in, uh, as he would say, shooting from the hip. So he wanted to improvise. Um, he was listening to jazz quite a bit. 
but it really was about whatever was coming to the fore. There was not this um, uh, kind of reflective um, philosophical consideration right. in that sense. Um, and he had a very uh, innate sense of color, obviously, but those yeah, ideas incredible. were not at all part of the, the same you know, debate. He was interested in all kinds of things, but he wasn't Know, philosophically thinking about uh, so, so so how how was it that he, he improvised with straight lines like he said <laughs> right because you don't think about improvisation being with a straight line on each side well I mean this goes back to one of the ways that we would do these paintings that were always on the floor so we would size the canvas with water and then we would make uh, pencil lines in various widths and from there um, he would mix some colors, or he would say, well, mix, you know, a kind of dirty blue. And, and then sometimes he would say, okay, so that color is going to go here, here, here. Or sometimes he'd say, well, why don't you, you know, develop a rhythm? And, uh, and then as far as the hand, I think that by the time I was working with him, he was less interested in being on his hands and knees and more, you know, having a lot of his assistants. <laughs> Do that kind of work. So, so let's let's move let's move over here because this is um, as close to anything rectilinear as right as I've seen you do. It's we've always you know, you've got these great shape canvases. You looked at this one. Here's this one. We can look at this one as well. So, what, was your work here already? When you were when you were a younger painter, or was this something you had to refine the tradition of shapes and and, and again planes that suggest either above or below or from the side and multiple kinds of realities meeting in a place that you're standing and looking is different from my standing. Yeah. Well, again, I think it goes back to this idea of. What is perception? What do you see? And for me, drawing was always fundamental. So much of my sketches, which uh, for these pieces and forever, as so far back as I can remember, was always about observation and drawing. And drawing these uh, shapes that went together or didn't, but it's always about the line and about the, the, the shape. Um, Refinding these shapes, I'm not sure. I mean, in North Africa, there uh, I was always fascinated by mosaics because there was so much Greco-Roman uh, uh, stuff around, and the idea of, of tessellations to create patterns and then larger holes was, was right. always with a little square pixel, yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely. Under marble yeah, pixels. it's just fascinating. And so some of that I would think uh, you know is carried and. Um, the rectilinearity of this one is also a play on perception because you, you are looking ostensibly into this profound shot that, that's created. And yet, if you look to one of the edges or the other, your, your mind is completely shifted. So you're not quite sure what is straight, what's not. I, I enjoy the play. I think there's... Um, Know, this idea of the, with, that the Mahdi artist talked about, the idea of play in art, is a little overlooked. And it doesn't mean that you can't be a serious artist, yeah. because you're adding an element of what is essentially our birthright as kids, how we right, learn. Right, isn't right? that funny to think that somehow play can be somehow something that's not desirable exactly. at all, or not serious, or yeah. something? Yeah, yeah. Which is our lives inform exactly. what it is that we like and yes. love, yeah. right? Yeah. And to artificially yeah. cut it out, yeah. it's zero. Why sense. would we get rid of that? Yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah. Absolutely. And then, of course, there's uh, so this is more of a, of a painting in depth, and then that one includes more of the transparency. Um, again, I'm creating the experience, and then you know how you receive that experience is. Obviously, um, up to you to 
to see what you know, how you feel, what your eyes do, what your how do you reconcile these opposites? How do you uh, what do you do with that distance? Right? Uh, because obviously these two colors are not going to make that. Yeah. And yet you, you are under the impression that there is a transparency, but none of it is logical. And, uh, and I would say also that um, part of the, maybe this kind of dissonance that occurs in the work has to do with uh, a kind of displacement that I, you know, historically have been under living in different places, in different countries, in different cultures, different languages. There's a lot of displacement, but I see it as something that's enriching and positive as well. Oh, fantastic. Well, thank you very much, Ms. Moka. That was absolutely brilliant and wonderful. Thank you. I'm delighted to be here to bear with and, you guys. And, and, and I have a, a much better understanding, and I appreciate your taking all of my questions, because I have uh, nothing of mine. I'm always asking questions. It's a pleasure. Anytime. Seriously.